Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another spectacular episode of History of the Marvel Universe. This week, we're looking at the origins of Cloak and Dagger. Our story begins in Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man, number 64, in 1982. Everyone's favorite wall crawler was swinging through the city when he heard a man on a rooftop screaming for help. Leaping down to investigate, Spidey discovered that the man was named Simon Marshall, a former pharmacist who was recruited by the mob to create addictive new drugs. Seemingly horrified by what he had done, Marshall begged Spider-Man to take him to the district attorney so he could confess. However, they were soon set upon by the mysterious Cloak and Dagger. Spider-Man charged at Cloak, who enveloped him in his cape, trapping the hero in a frigid void of complete darkness. Dagger, meanwhile, pursued Simon Marshall, throwing knives seemingly made of light, leaving no wound but proving fatal nonetheless. Spidey managed to free himself from the darkness within Cloak and battled the two vigilantes. Dagger's light knives followed Spider-Man, who nimbly avoided them until Cloak teleported next to him, holding him in place long enough for one dagger to pass through Spider-Man, incapacitating him long enough for the two to escape. Spider-Man made it home to recover, and the following day, in his civilian identity of Peter Parker, traveled to the Daily Bugle. There, he learned more about Simon Marshall from the Bugle's chief researcher, Mac Stennett. Mac explained that the police had learned of Marshall's activities from an informant earlier that year. They launched a raid on Marshall's base of operations on Ellis Island, but they were too late, and were met with a sight too horrible for words. Over a dozen dead children and teens, runaways the mob had abducted and used as lab rats for their designer drugs. Changing again to Spider-Man, Peter traveled to Ellis Island to search for clues. Here he found that Cloak and Dagger had captured and tied up all of Marshall's mob cohorts. As it turns out, out of all the kids that Marshall had tested his synthetic addiction on and left for dead, only two had survived. Something about their biology caused them to react differently to the drug, and they became Cloak and Dagger. Smashing down through the skylight, Spider-Man exclaimed that if he had known what had happened, he would have helped the two vigilantes get justice, but he would not allow them to become murderers. In the resulting scuffle, one of the mobsters grabbed a shard of glass from the broken skylight and used it to cut through his bonds. Using that same shard, he held Dagger hostage and the criminals began their escape. However, Cloak teleported behind them, using his power of darkness to obscure their vision, giving Spider-Man the opportunity to rescue Dagger. The mobsters ran through the darkness, desperate to escape, inadvertently running right into Cloak, who trapped them within the dark dimension under his cape, only to release them once he pointed the exit towards a window five stories up causing the mobsters to fall to their deaths. Their mission completed, Cloak and Dagger disappeared into the darkness, later reappearing in Spectacular Spider-Man number 69 and number 70. The two vigilantes continued their war on drugs by attacking a gang that had been selling to children. After interrogating their leader, they learned that the gang's supplier was the elderly crime lord known as Silvermane. After striking out into the rainy night, the pair were again met by the spectacular Spider-Man. Spidey points out that they had already taken out the ones responsible for what had happened to them, and while Cloak was determined to continue their crusade, Dagger seemed more reluctant. When the two reveal they intend to go after Silvermane, Spider-Man, having encountered the Crime Lord before, tries to stop them to prevent them from getting in over their heads. However, with the powers of darkness and light, Cloak and Dagger defeated Spider-Man and escaped again. Deciding to find Silvermane before Cloak and Dagger, Spider-Man visited police captain Gene DeWolf, who reminded him, and us, that Silvermane was badly injured during a three-way fight between himself, Spider-Man, and an imposter Green Goblin back in Amazing Spider-Man number 180. In order to find Silvermane's current whereabouts, Spider-Man infiltrated the stronghold of the Kingpin of Crime. Kingpin revealed to Spidey that he was well aware of Cloak and Dagger, and also claimed that he himself had never been involved with the drug trade. Clearly more than willing to allow two of his enemies to fight each other, Kingpin provided Spider-Man with Silvermane's address. 
Spidey traveled there intending to intercept Cloak and Dagger, but inadvertently led them right to their destination. The two teenage vigilantes battled Silvermane's gang, and while Spidey endeavored to prevent them from murdering the bedridden old crime lord, even going so far as to take one of Dagger's attacks for him, in the end, Cloak convinced Dagger to cut Silvermane's precious life support tubes, and the two disappeared again. On their own again, we see that Cloak is dedicated to the path they've set themselves on, while Dagger desired a normal life, a life that Cloak felt they couldn't have. Meanwhile, barely clinging to life, Silvermane's body was sealed up and brought elsewhere for a final, desperate gambit. The elderly Zara's brain and vital organs were transferred into a bionic body. Hungry for vengeance, the cyborg Silvermane struck out in search of Cloak and Dagger. His first targets, however, were the gang members who betrayed his name to the two vigilantes, but before he could enact his revenge, Spider-Man arrived and challenged him. The two super-powered opponents fought a pitched battle in the subway tunnels below New York City, but they were interrupted by Cloak and Dagger, who sought to take down Silvermane permanently. A goal they seemingly achieved when Dagger's light knives penetrated his metal armor and shorted out the precious circuitry that kept him alive. When Cloak and Dagger next appeared in Spectacular Spider-Man number 81 and 82, we learned more about their powers. While the darkness inside Cloak drains the light and heat from anything caught inside it, it's also able to cleanse people, freeing them from their drug addictions, something that Dagger's knives of light are also capable of. The two continued their quest of punishing drug dealers and healing their victims, and Spider-Man next met them when his spider sense led him to an apartment filled with beaten junkies. In traditional superhero fashion, a misunderstanding led to a scuffle until Dagger revealed that the victims were like that when she and Cloak arrived. In fact, the one responsible for the brutal attack was none other than the Punisher, who was on the trail of the source of the drugs the Kingpin of Crime. This would mean that in the earlier issue, Kingpin lied about not being involved in the drug trade, which is honestly not that surprising. Cloak and Dagger went after Kingpin as well, with Spidey again trying to stop them. At the same time, the Punisher infiltrated the Kingpin stronghold and challenged him, even going so far as to hold his wife Vanessa hostage. This did not work out well for him, however, as when the other vigilantes reached Kingpin's chambers, they found a badly beaten Punisher and their target nowhere to be seen. Soon after that, Cloak and Dagger starred in a self-titled four-issue miniseries. In this series, the two teen heroes took shelter in the Holy Ghost Church on 42nd Street, telling their story to the priest, Father Francis Xavier Delgado, who allowed them to stay. We also got confirmation here on something that was hinted at earlier. Cloak doesn't actually eat, he subsists entirely on the heat and light he drains from his victims. Fortunately, Dagger was capable of generating more than enough light to satiate Cloak's hunger. The series also introduced a character named Bridget O'Reilly, a police detective who tells Cloak and Dagger about a former drugstore employee named Dwayne Hellman, who she suspected was responsible for two recent cases of poisoned aspirin bottles. O'Reilly predicted Hellman's next target, and Cloak and Dagger rushed ahead, getting there before her and preventing Hellman from tampering with a bottle of children's medicine. Despite O'Reilly's protests, Cloak pulled Hellman into his darkness. Cloak then briefly left his companion, not wishing to feed off of her light any longer, but he eventually released Hellman to O'Reilly and reunited with Dagger, as it became evident that the two needed each other to survive. Returning to the church, Cloak and Dagger revealed more of their past to O'Reilly and Delgado. Dagger was a girl named Tandy Bowen. She was a talented dancer, but her famous actress mother was too busy to pay her much attention, and her real father had left the picture years ago. Tandy's stepfather tried to build a relationship with her, but she was too resentful to see it at the time, and when her older boyfriend left for college, Tandy decided to run away from home. Cloak, meanwhile, was a boy named Tyrone Johnson. Tyrone did fairly well both in school and on the basketball court, despite suffering from a disability which gave him a terrible stutter. Thankfully, he did have his best friend Billy to rely on, but tragedy struck when Tyrone and Billy came across a pair of robbers stealing from a sporting goods store. The thieves ran off, one of them fatally shooting the store owner. 
when an overzealous cop arrived and saw a young black man running away from a dead body, he drew his gun. Tyrone tried to explain, but his stutter prevented him from getting the words out, and Billy was shot and killed. Sneaking away, Tyrone went on the run. Poor and hungry, he saw Tandy Bowen carrying her purse. He followed her, tempted to take it, but before he acted, the purse was snatched by another thief. Tyrone tackled the purse snatcher, and rather than keep the spoils for himself, he returned the purse to Tandy, who bought him food as thanks. It was that night that Tyrone and Tandy were lured and captured by the gang that brought them to Simon Marshall to be test subjects for his designer drug. As we know, the two survived the experiment and made it back to the city. And while Tandy Bowen burned with light, Tyrone Johnson became a being of pure shadow. They became Cloak and Dagger. And that is the original origin story of Cloak and Dagger. If you like this video, you can click the thumbs up to let me know, and if you want to see more, you can subscribe to this channel for more marvelous content. Be sure to click the bell icon for notifications and let me know in the comments what you want to learn about next. As always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself. Also with links to my Twitter and Patreon where you can monetarily support the show. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!